To a mathematician, a matrix is a table of numbers which describes the relationships between the components of various kinds of systems. The system might be a bridge, an electrical circuit, a nuclear power reactor, or a sociological group. Each of the components of the system, the bridge struts, the resistors and capacitors, the neutrons, or the individual people, interact with the other components. The matrix elements represent the intensities of all these interactions. Analysis of the system using matrix techniques allows one to predict the effect of individual interactions on the overall system. Oscillations may be generated. Matrix analysis can describe the frequency and magnitude of such oscillations. This bridge near Tacoma, Washington, was designed and built before the effect of such interactions could be completely analyzed. The wind has reinforced some undesirable oscillations with unfortunate results. Modern computers are particularly well suited to solving problems involving large matrices. The designer of a system can obtain accurate predictions about the reaction of his system to external forces. The computer is used to simplify the matrix so that most of the entries will be zeros. One method is known as the singular value decomposition. The original matrix is represented as the product of three matrices. In the second of these matrices, the only non-zero elements lie on the diagonal. These elements, the singular values of the matrix, determine the frequencies of oscillation of the original system. The other two matrices must preserve the properties of the original matrix, so they are orthogonal matrices. Each is the product of elementary matrices, which affect only two rows or columns. Scientists at Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory have been studying methods for the accurate and efficient calculation of the singular value decomposition and of describing to computer users how the computation is carried out. In this three-dimensional representation of a small matrix, each pyramid depicts the magnitude of a single matrix element. The diagonal of the matrix runs from the upper left to the lower right. Orthogonal transformations will be used to introduce zeros into the matrix. The initial transformations put zeros into the first row and then the first column. Each transformation affects two other columns or rows shown here in blue. Later transformations introduce zeros into later rows and columns while preserving the zeros already obtained. It is not possible to annihilate all the off-diagonal elements in a column, so this first stage produces a matrix with non-zero elements directly below the diagonal, as well as those on the diagonal. This film is produced by exposing a single frame each time a matrix element is altered. To illustrate roughly the computer time actually required for various phases of the computation. The elements shown in red are involved in auxiliary calculations which require time, but which do not directly alter any elements. As more zeros are introduced, the rows and columns become shorter, and each transformation requires less time. The second stage of the calculation is a repetitive or iterative process which reduces the size of the remaining off-diagonal elements, but does not zero them in a single step. During the process, New elements, shown in red, are temporarily introduced into the matrix. The calculations now being shown are primarily intended to reduce the size of the off-diagonal element at the lower right-hand corner. Once an off-diagonal element has reached a negligible magnitude, it is set to zero. The computation of the corresponding diagonal element is then complete, and the resulting singular value is shown in blue. During these iterations, most of the other off-diagonal elements are also being reduced in size, although not as rapidly. A few of them will occasionally increase in size. This makes theoretical analysis of the method difficult, but does not seriously impair its overall effectiveness. Since elements are being depicted according to logarithmic scale, 
The off-diagonal elements we see are actually quite small by this time. The transformations are still changing the diagonal elements, but the changes are not visible on this scale. Once a few of the singular values have been obtained, the off-diagonal elements have become so small that each of the remaining singular values is obtained with a single iteration. The final diagonal matrix, together with the two transforming matrices which produced it, then provide the basis for a complete analysis of the original matrix and the system which it models.